All right, so we're here at another episode of Rawcast with Munch215. Yeah. Uh, so for the people, introduction, profession, you know, who you are, what you want them to know you as. All right, y'all, what's up, man? My real name is Anthony, but everybody call me Munch. Um, my IG, Munch215. Um, field marketing manager for Villa. In Philly, we know it as Sneaker Villa. Uh, been there now, what? 10 years in July, been oh, 11 wow. years for me. Yeah, cool, long cool. Time. So what exactly does a field marketing manager do? So what I do as a field marketing manager, pretty much like I got to oversee every store in the entire company mm -hmm. for any events, grand openings, anything with celebrities, anything with influencers, in inner city or national. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much like any of the cool things that go on with Villa, that's all under me. Okay, so, so both you said you've been there for almost 11 years now. Yeah. What What were you doing before? So I started as a salesperson okay. back in 2007. Uh, started as a salesperson, you know, learned everything, challenged my managers every day to teach me everything. Uh, got promoted to an assistant manager down at the gallery. Then uh, when we first went to Cleveland in 2009, I, you know, they offered me to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Cleveland. I got promoted to store manager uh, like January, February 2010. Then, um, you know, I was out there, you know, making things happen, you know, meeting people and mm -hmm. everything. And then um, things was just going good. Then they start, you know, trying to get me to come on the marketing side. And I was like, no. Nah. They really started coming like 2013. I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool. Like, right. I'm actually good where I'm at. I'm mm -hmm. being in the stores. But then they just kept coming. Like, they stayed persistent with it. And my old boss, he's still my mentor to this day, Pat, he really just kept like flying to the market, like trying to get me to come on the market mm -hmm. side. And then um, we, we we bought out a company called DK Foot and Casual down okay. in Texas. And that's when like, he was like, yo, I want you to come to Texas with me and like, you know, do this marketing thing. I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool. But then he flew me out there with him. We meet with radio stations and stuff. He introduced me as the marketing rep. And I'm like, dog, I ain't signed no paper. Right. I'm not no marketing rep, right. but, you know, it was cool. You know, they put their salary in front of me. I said, oh. <laughs> right, I'm like, yeah. that, that helped. Here we go. For there sure. Go. So that's when I became a marketing rep when I first went to Texas in 2014. Cool, cool. So, I mean, you post, like, a lot of different sneakers, the end sneakers, and, you know, things like that. So I'm sure people assume that it's just, like, fun, free sneakers, this, that. Yeah. But how is it, like, really hard work? Do you put a lot of work into what you do? Yeah, so pretty much, like, I don't ever show what leads up to the actual end result. Okay. Like, I'll only show the end result on everything. Um, a lot of people think I get all my shoes for free. Mm -hmm. No. If it's more so a collab that we do, like a Villa Timberland, a Villa Saccone, Villa, Villa Asics, then yeah, that's gonna come for free right. because that's our you know personal shoe. But like the Jordan my drops, Jordans, and, my yeah, Nikes, Air Maxes, all that, I pay for every shoe. Okay. I have like some friends that may work at Jordan, they may work at Adidas, Nike, or whatever. They may send me shoes here and there, mm -hmm. but majority of my shoes I'm paying for. So on a day to day, is it like a lot of work that goes in yes. to marketing? Yeah. yeah. It's a whole lot. Yeah. Whole, a whole lot of planning, a lot of thinking, <laughs> a whole lot of times you just got closure off the door and zoned out. With right. Those things done. Right. So. Cool. All right, so in your bio, you have influence the influencers. Yeah. Tell us about that term. What does that mean to you? So that's a term, like, I came up with that um, a couple years ago. Because, like, you know, with marketing or just anything day to day, you know, I look at it like this. Everyone's an influencer. Right. Like everybody is, you know, good at something. Mm -hmm. So I don't want people to just think, like, oh, I got to be a celebrity to be considered an influencer. Right. No. Right. So me, I look at it like this. Even the top celebrity, somebody, you know, I'm not going to say, like, the top celebrity, you could still influence them, influence them some way, somehow. Mm -hmm. So that's why I use the quote influence. Because them. even the celebrities, I mean, they're around celebrities all day long. Yeah. So yeah, they, they come around regular people, and they, they might peep something that they like or, exactly. you know, something new to them. Yeah. So for sure. Uh, so speaking of celebrities, um, how do you balance the work and the play? Or is it like, is there a balance? Uh, it's a balance for sure, because um, there's definitely times where, you know, you may be in a club with a celebrity or you may be, you know, doing your one-two with somebody and it may be something they're doing that you can't because at the end of the day, you're still working right. at the end of the day. Um, so how I balance it out, I just, I keep everything neutral. I don't never like, you know, be like, oh, well, I'm with Fab this day, so I'm going to act this way. Oh, I'm with Cameron so this way, I'm mm -hmm. this way. No, it's going to be the same 24-7. Facts. So. Okay. So, school. Did you go to school for marketing? No. Or? I'm no. actually in school now for it. And, you, you know, it's good that my job paid. So. Okay. So, do you think, is it something that you wanted to do, or is it kind of like you Mark felt like you need to... No, going to school. Yeah. 
I, I me, I feel as though I gotta do it now because I never want to get, you know, with just corporate America. I never want to get to that point where they want to hit me with the, oh, you're great at doing this, but you don't have that. Right. Background. So you want to be prepared. Yeah. So right. Stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. Yeah. Right. All right, so um, what do you feel is the most important thing with marketing? Or your, I mean, maybe you can't give away your, like, marketing tools, but. Uh, the most important thing is just, you know, challenging yourself and then challenge people around you every day. Me personally, like, like my best friend is a barber. Like, I bounce ideas off him, he bounce ideas off right. me. So it's like, with marketing, it's, it's anything. It's not just, you know, signage and billboards and commercials. It's everything. Right, so. right. All right, so um, to date, what has been your favorite memory or something that you've done with RU Villa? Oh, man. On the marketing side or just overall? In general, yeah. It could be both, marketing and To overall. date, though, I say like the, the top thing I want to just have one in my belt. Um, when I started with the company, I only had 11 stores. Uh -huh. uh, I watched the company grow to 128 to date, and I've been around. Uh, for majority of the openings, and I help assist the openings. Majority. majority. How many stores are there? There's 128 total. And okay. We have Ten different states. Cool. So. Cool. So you go to different. Oh, when you're yeah. traveling, you go to the different stores. Yeah. And then like the top thing I have done, like I never was scared to step out of my comfort zone. And when I stepped out of the box when I was 19 and moved to Cleveland, uh, I actually used that as my quote unquote college. Okay. Like, might as well, you know, they they paying for everything. Mm -hmm. And then when I went down to Texas, I did all this on my work down. They paid for everything, and I just took all that as like learning experiences. Cool, cool. So when you go, is it like different? Let me see. Like you know, how we had a Jordan thing here. Like everybody loves the Jordans yeah, here, yeah. or is it the same when different stores you go to, or do they have their own little no, sneaker that they're crazy about? Different cities love different shoes. Yeah. But Jordans is loved everywhere. Everywhere, right? Um, but like in the DC market, they love New Balances, and Texas, they love Saconis, in Cleveland. It's where uh, they love everything out there. But LeBron James shoes, they gonna right. die, go. Wait, people crazy. wear LeBron's with like jeans? Yeah, yeah. Really? I did. You could wear them with jeans. It's certain ones though. Okay. It, it, I mean, it, I'm not. It was, a it was certain person. numbers where you couldn't wear them with jeans. Uh -huh. you know, not strictly basketball, but some joints you could definitely like. Oh, you could freak them. You could put a dope outfit together. But like, who? Everybody wears sweats now. Like dressing, dressing sweats up and down. So yeah. I guess nobody is really wearing jeans like that anymore. I can't really think of the last time I've seen jeans. Sweat right, now. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Everybody loves loves sweat sweatpants. Um so what's some sneakers that you feel like should be a part of everyone's closet? Like some oh, must haves. Alright, so like I said, I'm a diehard sneakerhead. Mm hmm I have over a thousand pair of shoes. Okay. I have shoes tattooed on my leg. So the number one shoe you should have in your collection is a Jordan one. Brands and Royals you gotta have them in your collection. An Air Max one you gotta have in your collection. An Air Force one you gotta have in your collection. Whether well, it's just the basic black. Like, I was about to say Air Force, white or black. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna go with the white. Okay. But you gotta have one of them in your collection. Um, and just like what's two other shoes you gotta have? Uh, you gotta have some type of designer if you can. Like, okay. Clean. What's your favorite designer? I like Balenciaga because they they clean like the uh -huh. runners. You can just dress them up real cool. Um, what's one more shoe, man? Which one? Oh, yeah, you gotta have some black ones. Okay, I, oh, yeah, like, I like the black ones, though. Like the black ones. Right, can we, can we, can They're we, mean. Can we justify this? <laughs> Can people stop calling them black butters? What are they? Thing. Oh, right, because butters are <laughs> butter color. Like, right? people, when I work in the surgery, let me get some black butters. I'm like, where they at? Right. I'm, like, when I say I'm a, I'm a asshole, right. like, people be like, yo, let me get some black butters. I'm like, what are those? Right, when you going to get those? We don't have black butters. So what are what are we supposed to call it? Let the people know. And black suede, too. Oh, I got to say all that. Black, no, black butter some, sounds so much cooler. Let me get some black suede. Black butters is no suede. such thing. All right, but just, like, why can't we just say that? Black butters? All right. How, how? No, I get what you're no. saying. How sweet. I get what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, it sounds, it's better. It rolls off the tongue. That's cool. We we know what it is. Now. All right, so black Swedes. Black or I'm going to say black Tims. Black butters. But then, if I say black Tims, you think I'm saying, like, you might bring me out some leather joints. People still wear those? Yeah, they back. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. See, with fashion now, you can really do whatever. People could do whatever. Whatever, want, yeah. So. That's that's like my homie, I seen him, he just put some on IG, my man Rugs down in Texas. I mean down in Atlanta, sorry. He just had on some black leather tones with a crazy fit. Like you could dress them up. Cool, so. yeah, I like the black ones. They're my favorites.
So um, marketing, so marketing is like an art within itself. What are some of your favorite tools or things that get you going as far as marketing? It's like Instagram or some people love Tumblr, you know. I would say IG for me, okay. Instagram. Um, IG could be a gift and a curse at the end of the day. You gotta use it the right way. Facts. You scroll back, I think I have 6,000 posts though. I used to be that guy on Instagram that posted dumb stuff and yeah. all that. But you know, after a while, it got older and I matured my page up. Um, so you don't want to delete those things? I try to go back, but you, Instagram. It's so much. They need to have like they a, to, when a go, control. When you go multiple deletes. Hell yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. They need that. They need to start. I was just saying that because like you said, it's it, it's a give or take with Instagram. Like I had to get off to like get my hair together. Sure. Because I felt like I was just doing anything on there or just looking at anything. I was like, yo, you got to get off of here. Come back. And then I, you know, I came back stronger. Thank God. But. It, I definitely agree with that. Instagram can be like good or bad. Yeah. But yeah, they definitely Instagram. Y'all need to do a um. I don't a know. Control. All these updates and all these new phones and stuff. Yeah. I ain't come up with that. Yet. That's like, so. I was just delete. saying it, and then sometimes it'll throw you off. You gotta go. You get yeah, shot you back, back up. Like, if you delete, if you delete, I think like twenty pictures in that, within an hour. Mm -hmm. you're like, no, you can't delete. No yeah. More. Come on, man. man Insane. Yeah, and that's a lot of pictures. Six thousand pictures. I've been around. No lie. I had Instagram. Since day one, before the wave had happened, Instagram came out when. Man, I started. I ain't start Instagram, <laughs> but I started having my page and much twenty five in my name on there forever, since like two thousand eleven, mm -hmm. two thousand twelve. Like one thing I did when I first moved to Cleveland, I um, I really introduced Villa to like social media. Mm -hmm. I used Facebook like to drive traffic into the stores. Right. I didn't know nobody in Cleveland. What I did was I just went through, I found like the power of the DJ stuff flaws. I added all his friends. And what I did was I uploaded product on my, my personal Facebook page. Uh -huh. I gave these new Air Maxes, new Jordans. People was coming to the store, like, y'all seen this on the dude, Anthony Munch still page. I want to get these. I'm like, oh, that's me. Here you go. Come get them. Right. So, and then when Instagram came about, it was like, if you if somebody was to scroll back on my page, they'd be like, dang, he really wasn't lying. Like, his pictures was... Terrible. The quality was <laughs> terrible back then. Right. So. so, do you still speaking of Facebook? Do you still use Facebook yeah, as I far as marketing? Facebook. Yeah. yeah I link everything together. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, some people are like diehard Facebook fans. So. Yeah. For I guess sure. you have to yeah. do both. I'm not a diehard Facebook fan. Me either. Uh -huh. I ain't even gonna lie. Me either. I get on there. I really kept my Facebook for family though. So okay. Like yeah, like the time. older people yeah. and yeah, for sure. Um, so with all the sneakers, sneaker stores, and people in your field, and th you know people doing the same, not the same thing you're doing. I don't want to make it sound like that, but you know, in your field, how do you? Is it like a little bit of friendly competition, or how do you like <laughs> separate the separate the two? All right, so yeah, it's definitely friendly competition. Like I said, my, my best friend here, Barbara, right? Mm -hmm. I work at Villa, and then some of my guys work at Kicks USA, so right? That's Ubik. When I say we friendly competition, like we all meet at the barbershop and then we all friends, we all mm -hmm. hang out, but we all just talk trash and we bounce ideas off each other. Okay, too. so it's not like you don't have to, you, you gotta watch what you say, it's not nah, that kind of thing. Nah, it's okay. definitely friendly competition. We clown each other on social media. We have times where we make comment, crazy stuff on people's pages, mm -hmm. like on each other's pages and all that. So okay, fun. cool, cool. That, that's a good thing. Friendly competition is always good, yeah. especially within, within your circle. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna be like having, like I said, having to watch what you say and all that type shit. That's, Morning. So where did you, you said you, you're a diehard sneaker fan. Yeah. Where did your love of sneakers come from? Really, I just loved sneakers as a kid and it just grew with me. Um, I always wanted a lot of sneaks. Um, I started working at a young age just cause like, you know, everybody got that story. Single mother, yeah. no father, the yeah. second, third. But I remember the times, the Foot Locker days where, I not many people remember this, but Foot Locker used to have a deal, two for 89. Okay. Me and my brother, my mom used to take it to the store, He's a big nigga. You get one, and you get one. Wait, so it could be anything? No, no, it was certain shoes. Okay. So the shell, so you know how Adidas come with the thick, with the thick toe. Mm -hmm. Foot Locker showed them with the skinny toe. Okay. But that was part of the two for eighty nine deal. I used to hate back to school time <laughs> because it was like, damn, bro, like two for eighty nine, like I could get a New Balance five seven four or fucking shell toe. Right. So it was like, bro, don't get the same fucking shoe as me. Right. So. Really, I just always loved shoes. When I first got my first job, I just bought every shoe. I used to cut school, but come back. <laughs> I used to leave like lunchtime. Um, it was a store up like West Oak Lane that sold Jordans early. I used to go there and get my Jordans and come back to school and everything. So. Cool. So like even what you were saying, what did you say? The Air Max, Fasta, like all the little terms. Like I don't even know. That's how you know that you're like definitely a diehard yeah. sneaker fan because I don't even know those terms. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, I know the names. I yeah. Know when they first came. Uh, 
time they came out again, they came out again, and the original price, like butter, just to be one twenty. Mm -hmm. really, How much are they now? One ninety. Ooh. Yeah, Air Force One is seventy seventy five dollars. Now they ninety ninety five. I ain't never buying no man on nothing. No sneakers. One ninety. Why? Uh uh, I'm good. You gonna walk real great in them? <laughs> Feet warm they are they warm? Butters? Yeah, they switched them up. And okay. A little comfortable all right, so all right, so I might, he might yeah. get a little butter on me, little Sorry. little black butter on me. No. All right. Well. <laughs> no black butter. <laughs> no. So where would you like to see yourself in five years five. or two two years? What are some of your goals that you're that you definitely uh, want to attack? I'm actually working on something now. Can't put it out there now. Okay. People will know within like the next two to three weeks. Okay. Um, but five years definitely still, you know. Me, I just like to, me, I always go back to my old school parkway, mm -hmm. talk to the kids, any kid, period, just mentoring people um, and letting people know, like, yo, for one, if college is not for you at that at that particular time, you can go eventually. You right. don't have to force yourself to go at 17, 18, 19 right. years old. Like me, I could have went when I first um, graduated high school, mm -hmm. I swear to God, I would not be in the position I'm in today. Um... The reason I didn't go to school when I first graduated, for one, I had my daughter. Mm -hmm. Four months after I graduated. Okay. Yeah, my math right. No, my math wrong. Three months after I graduated. Um, I said I wanted to focus and be a father, but um, just mentor kids for pretty much mm -hmm. five years from now. Two, two years to five years, you know, continue doing that and continue buying shoes. And yeah, stuff. but as far as like not going to school, also doing something productive <clears throat> yeah, in yeah. that time. Because you hear, they, they may hear you say that and be like, all right, well, I'm just out here until no, I decide, no, you know, until no. I'm ready, I want to go to school. Don't just sit around the block. If you got a passion, identify what your passion is and, you know, take it serious. My passion was shoes. I got a job at, before Sneaker Villa, I was working at Model. Mm -hmm. Before Model, I was working at Journey's Kids. Before Journey's Kids, it always obviously been shoes. Like, but so. when you were in those positions, did you know how big it could be or no. how, right? Me personally, like me and my homies, we laugh about this every day. I never would have thought with Villa. Sneaker Villa, I'll be where I'm at today. Right. When I started 11 stores, 128 to this day, if I never went to Cleveland, I'd never be where I'm at. Right. So it's 2018, right? 2018. Yeah. Do you think, has it always been a position for field marketing managers? No. Or do you think, like, with everything going the way it is, that's it's a need for it now? Um, it's definitely a need for it because you got to identify what's going on out there in the field, in the streets. Right. Um, but then, you know, you got to connect with the influence. You got to connect with the people mm -hmm. day to day. Um, and then, you know, you got to build out a team. Like, I have a team of five in, five in the five major markets we have. Okay. And I coach and mold them and, and you know, get them ready. And so do you pick, do you ch not choose your own team, but is it the, are you Villa Company or do you kind of, no, like, are your hands in it as well? So how I was able to get a team, when I first got promoted from marketing rep to marketing, field marketing manager, mm -hmm. my boss, he challenged me to put together a field marketing and training program. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there ain't school for marketing, none of that, but they kept saying, like, come natural to you. So really just put together a program that teach people how to be you. Okay. So I put together, it was like a 16-week course. Um, we flew, I identified five people, five strong people in the company. Uh, we flew them out to Philly every time, mm -hmm. training and everything. It was uh, Philly, I mean, sorry, it was Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Texas, and then Philly. It was Philly. Um, had my five people come out, train them and everything. And then once the course was done, I was able to promote two right into the position, and the other three later on. Cool. Um, so it was cool. And it, as far as the team, how, do, how important do you feel it is to have a team behind it's you? It's important because, like I said, if me and my friends bounce on ideas off each other, you and your team can bounce ideas. And then some of the stuff, every everyone on the team, we all similar in some way. Mm -hmm. Sneakers, fashion, mm -hmm. whether it's tattoos, something. We right. all it's all tied back some way. So it wasn't, and I, I made sure I let Villa know, like, yo, I don't want y'all to say, oh, we want you, to, we want to put. I'm just, I'm just throwing a name out there, Billy Bob on your team. Mm -hmm. No, I don't really connect with Billy Bob. Let me pick my team and let me really mold them. These are the five individuals I click with. So right. Let me, you know, get them together. Right. That's good. So, do you give? Is it like giving giving jobs to your friends, or are you like, no, this is like? No, I did that before and it didn't work out. Yeah. Um, so no, I really don't do friends. I don't do. I will help a cousin or a brother or mm -hmm. sister or somebody get a job, but if I work it, if I worked in the stores, you wouldn't work with me because okay. you don't look at it like. My brother, I can do whatever. That's right. My cousin, I can Naturally, do whatever. yeah, it's just something that we do for some reason. Yeah. So, I mean, we spoke about the kids. You wanted to do something with the kids, um, you know, in the, in the near future. So, t do you have any tips for people trying to get into your field or 
people something or some tips that you wish somebody would have told you that you know before you started out? Um, one tip is don't be afraid to fail. That's a tip everybody gives nowadays, but right, but it's no, it's, it's, it's real, truth, right? yeah. You're gonna take an L. <laughs> um, you're gonna take numerous L's. Um, everything not gonna work in marketing. Mm -hmm. like, everything don't work. Uh, some events may have 500 people. Some events may have five people. Right. But always make sure you just continue to have that same mindset. Yeah, like regardless of how many people, people are there, you make sure you marketing your ass yeah. off, basically. Yeah. yeah. So do you feel like you can market anything, or you're, you're specially you're you're specifically for sneakers? Nah, I could do. I don't think I could do anything, but I could do a lot. Like what? <laughs> like anything. I can't market my goddamn hair or fucking. So like, so nah. mm, I mean, I'm trying to think of something that. Cause like, like with Villa right now, I don't just market shoes. Like we we carry apparel, we right? Carry accessories and stuff too. So it may be a time we doing, um, we do a collab. Okay, it's a it's an ASIC, ASIC shoe coming out, but we also got this accessory crap protect to go with it. Plus this shirt, plus this. So we mm -hmm. gotta figure out how to bring all that together. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Cool. 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 So for the people, let them know where they can find you. Um, Maybe some things. I mean, I know you said you can't speak on two to three weeks. We got you got something cooking. I'll come back and talk about it. All right, all right. So let the people know where um, where uh, they can find you. You can find me um, at the nursing home on Tuesdays. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. I told you I was gonna say that, but no. Um, all social media: Twitter, Instagram at Munch two one five M U N C H two one five. Facebook is Anthony Munch still. Uh, Snapchat I barely use, but it's much underscore two one five. Your Snapchat, do you like people to follow your Snapchat? I barely post on. Okay, but I feel I, like my Snapchat is for people that only people that know me. I barely. I used to post a lot on Snapchat. I just put some stuff up driving here. I was like, okay. Man. But IG, I'm more in there heavy. Twitter, I'm more in there talking trash, sports, everything. Right. Um, and then Facebook, like I said, I really got Facebook connect with my family when I'm out of town and stuff. So. Right. Cool. Cool. Well, we thank you for um, coming out to interview with us for sure. Definitely. Uh, we learned some, I learned some good things about sneakers. I know not to say uh, black feathers. You can say it. People know what it is. It just don't now. make sense. Black no, but I want to be, I want to be, I want to be legit. Like my mom does hair, right? Right. So. Can she get me together? I got a body. I'm trying to get I don't know. I don't, we can talk about that off camera. I don't I know get about that. Back. I got a body. I'm trying to come back. You trying to come back? Yeah. Oh. I asked my man to draw a hairline the other day, he told me no. You might need to not do that. That's messed up. Yeah. Damn. But women get relaxers. It relaxes your hair. And black women say, uh, and then a perm curls your hair. So women always a say. Perm bring your edges up? <sighs> you know what? But listen, I'm making a point. What's listen, per, people always say, like, yeah, I got a perm. But really, they got a relaxer. You got, So I'm. You probably don't get what I'm saying. But it's the same thing. Like, you can't say. Black butters, and you can't say, Yeah, I got a perm because technically you did not. I got a perm and it burnt my hair off. No, I'm playing. You know what? <laughs> I'm trying to get my hairline back. I don't know if we can help you with that. I don't want my hairline back. I like the body. Yeah, I think the body the body is <laughs> grow is it's definitely nice. Now, if you had a body and a bald face, yeah. then you'd be like, <laughs> Then you'd be like, Uh uh, we'd be like, Nah. That'll be, that'll be, then you might have to draw some shit off. But you good. You got the body and you got the and you got the half beard. I got the Philly beard. See the little patch. I got the Philly beard. I ain't see that. I got a Philly beard. Oh gosh. So we always toast to the end oh, of good. our okay. interviews. Thank you. And we out. I'll take it off. <laughs> Every time somebody do that, they spill it.